firstly, let's, let, us stop, let us stop describing our music as Bahamian music, because I don't describe my dialect as Bahamian dialect, and I don't describe R&B as American R&B, and I don't talk to reggae about reggae as Jamaican re reggae. I, we have to first come to a point of defining our music. And we have, of course, the, the Junkanoo rhythms that we are very aware of, and we, then Bahamian took the bold step in trying to bring that into a kind of modern sound. And then, of course, we have our traditional rake and scrape. Um, Bahamian would have done the song, Listen, everybody. We did Dance to the Junkanoo, and so you will hear different style of guitars and that. Where Herschel Small and myself, we try to play opposite each, each other. When one playing down low, the other one is playing high. Counter rhythms, you know? You hear a lot of me doing that. You hear me doing a lot of that stuff, and Herschel will be doing that. Down low. You hear a lot of that happening, so we counter each other in rhythms. And the same thing would happen later as I started recording Rake and Scrape with Emily and Ronnie, but look what you do on those songs. You'll hear Ira doing a lot of this. And you'll hear me playing. You hear a lot of counter rhythms going on. So that helps to build the rhythm out stereo-wise and give it some kind of fresh Thing. So everything doesn't sound the same. So because you hear a lot of the young guitar players playing this, like like a kind of soca-ish to me. The rake and scrape is a little bit different because we got the juck. We got that juck it. This this whole thing right here, bro. That's what makes it the rake and scrape. So um, the juck, as we call it. So that whole development of what is now we consider the Bahamian rhythm is, um, I call it our music, so I don't like referring to it as Bahamian music, it's, it's our rake and scrape. Well, you know, the thing about rhythms, and if you listen to R&B or pop or even reggae, Everything has to lock together. If something goes counter to what the core rhythm is, it feels out of place. Um, most times you see bass and, bass and drums locked together in most of the rhythms that happen. And the same thing happens for guitars. We try not to get in the way. You know, even when the reggae stuff is going, you hear the stuff happening, it doesn't get in the way of whatever is happening in the rhythm. We try to do the same thing with the rake and scrape. You don't want to have the, the soaker rhythm coming in against a rake and scrape because somewhere in that cadence, something doesn't line up. So persons like myself, again, I say like Iris Starr and others, we try to figure how we could make it lock in the rhythm. So the rake and scrape is based on the saw and the, and the, the, the coat skin drum. You have that. So we try to, yeah, our guitar rhythm is doing that same thing. So we try to lock that in. But whatever the saw and the hi-hat is playing, we try to lock that in. You know this? That's, that's locking in. And you'll see me playing a lot of that counter rhythm stuff. You see me play a lot of that counter rhythm stuff to do the same thing. Whatever the drum is doing, whatever the saw is doing, we try to lock them in together. One of, the, uh, one of the downfalls, I think, that happened with our music is we have tried to limit it to three chord progressions, you know? I mean, even though a lot of our popular songs uh, would have been basically over three chord progressions, but we listen to cultural music and we get them doing whatever they need to do. We listen to soft pop and they do whatever they want, so why can't we do the same with Rake and Scrape? We could slow it down, you know? Um, Ronnie Butler has, and I make reference to him because to me, he is the quintessential you know, don't mind the things that the JP. Mind the things that yeah, two chords. And then we later came with a I'm in a state of ecstasy. Yeah, same thing, one, two chords. Happy as can be. And the 
bridge, I guess we'll do a... Some people never will understand. We try to turn it into a little more chords. All I know is I'm glad you Six, you know, two. We try to add a little different flavor. So we don't make all the songs. You, you don't want to take one song melody and, you know, and sing over the changes that everybody playing over. So there's nothing wrong with taking a risk and, and, and trying to... The most important thing is to maintain the rhythm. Understand how the rhythm works together, how everything syncs sync together to make sure the saw sync with your guitar, make sure the drum you know, locks with your ghost skin drum, whatever you do. So, simple, quite simply put, is it only takes a moment to figure it out. Take some time to figure it out, man. You know, if you listen to uh, um, old, old Rick and Scrape songs like, uh, Oh, let me go down to Bimberley. You know, some of that, sometimes you hear it at this tempo. Ah, let me go down to Bimberley. And that's what, that's what we do. We take other people's songs and, and turn it into rake and scrape. We did this thing with Marvin Henfield. I can't remember what that song is called. Um, we just take everybody's song and turn it into, into, our, into our rhythms. Um, I see Gino D had a... The old home looks the same. Three. Uh, here's, I don't have to introduce you to this because I'm sure everyone knows this song. Here's a famous song, a song made famous by, it's an old traditional song actually, made famous by Ronnie Butler. And every time we hear it, everybody still, uh, no, uh, apart from Bahama Rock, everybody knows this song, um, Crocalypso it's called. And it's, it's a pretty simple riff, you know. I mean, when you hear me play it, you hear me embellish on it a little bit more than Ronnie and Flash did. But the basic thing is on the E, on the E chord here. Very simple, right? And this is the sweet part here. It's just a hammer on. Just a hammer on right here. Simple hammer on. On the first fret. So now when I play it, I try to take it like a... I go like, like a show off a little bit kind of thing. So I, I do like a... You let me do that kind of stuff on it. Because it feels pretty to me. That's the only reason I do that. But it's really simple. It's just simple on the first, on the, in the E position. It's very easy here. It's right there. Unless you want to get crazy and go. Which is also Shepherd Mourn by Ronnie Butler. And another important thing to kids is coordinating your pick with your left hand fingering. If, if they don't coordinate, you can get a lot of stuff in between that doesn't sound very good in your performance. Work on getting your playing as clean as you possibly can. And that takes a lot of practice. I'm, I'm doing a lot of dirty stuff too because I don't practice as much. So you will hear a lot of my stuff going. Damping, right hand. That makes this everything cleaner well. Yeah. You hear you hear I do that when I do the song like uh age you nothing but a number, you'll see me go. That's that right hand damp thing there. So all those tech they're just techniques that you get over time. You don't get that in one practice. You can take some time to develop your own sound. But if you're learning songs like Crocalypso, the first thing is to just get the melody, get the E chord on your E string. That's just between your E and your B string. Anybody could do that. If I could do that, you could do it. Quite simple. It's the same. It's green grass up home. Step down. You know, you just have to take the risk, but make sure it locks within the context of what the rake and scrape rhythm is.
Oh man, just like any, no, nothing, just like any profession, you know. I mean, people sometimes take our profession to be, it looks simple when they see us on stage and we're doing the, whatever we do. They'll say, uh, well, it you know, looks so simple, but they don't understand the hours that go behind. You sit alone in your room, you're running scales, you're running fingering patterns, you know, up and down the fretboard just to make sure you have a, make sure you have coordination between your picking and your fingering. Um, I remember when I first came into the business full time, Herschel Small, who was the other guitar player in high voltage, used to be doing it all the time, just sitting down, running, you know, fingering patterns. And I'd be like, dog, boy, I need to do that. And then he hollered at me one time and tell me if I come to play, I better play. Right after that, I had to start taking it seriously. And, um, but it doesn't happen overnight. It, you have to continue to do it. You, you don't only develop your finger techniques, you also develop your air. And then eventually you develop your own sound. Because, you know, when you hear my stuff played, a lot of people say, well, they know it's me who played because I've developed the sound. Whenever I hear something played by Ira Starr, I know it's, it's Ira because he's developed the sound. And that only happens by, by sitting down and working at it over and over and over again. You can't put your guitar down. You need to love the sound of the instrument. You have to buy a halfway decent instrument that makes it easier to move up and down your fretboard. And then you'll start to see your, 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 your guitar playing develop and progress. One of, the one of the challenges we have locally is um, we don't have any place, many places for, for live musicians to, for persons to go and see live musicians. Um, there are a few teachers around. There are guitar players like Pat Carey and Chris Fox. These are top local guitar players who are teaching. I recommend you look them up and, and let them guide you in the right direction. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to the day, though, that with projects like this that that happening, um, what's it called, the project? The Music Project. I'm looking for projects like the Music Project to be able to assist in this shortfall, because out of this will become bands. More and more bands will, will mean more and more performances. And as a result of that, people will be able to grow and, um, you know, grow their, 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 their craft. So the main thing right now is the school of YouTube. Um, if you want to learn the Bahamian stuff, you listen to as m the, the, the local mu rake and scrape music, you listen to as much as you can. There are different old bands out there. There's Eloise Lewis, um, who was a female guitar player. You have um, Wendell Stewart. You have Frankie Zhivago. You have um, Rusty Ambrista, who played with um, Tony Seymour. And of course, you have the legendary Ronnie Butler. And there are so many others out there. Just take the chance to find the records. If you can't find them in the stores, call around. Persons like myself, I have lots of them. Charles Carter, I have all of them. So, you know, that's the main thing to do is listen and practice, practice, practice. As I began, I said, I see trumpet players develop a thing on their lip from playing their trumpets a lot. The same thing happened to guitar players. You look at our tips, our fingers, it's not like hard like their lip thing, but there's some form of calluses there that's formed after years and years of playing. And by developing your technique, the, the calluses form just in the place where you play all the time. So after a while, not in a short while. And when, you've, when you begin, your fingers are going to hurt. They will hurt. But you keep doing it. If you're passionate enough about the instrument, if you're passionate enough about the sound of the instrument, you will be able to de you'll develop strength in your fingers. You will also get that thing on the fingertip that I just told you about. And there will be no more pain. All that will just happen, and that work towards the development of your sound. Uh, closing.
closing, um, I just encourage all you younger musicians. I know not there are a lot of drummers and keyboard players out there, but all you young guitar players, those of you who are interested in this rake and scrape sound, I, develop, I, I encourage you to develop it by not being ashamed of it. You know, a lot of us, we believe that we need to play the soca rhythms because it's popular, but it, it wasn't always popular. It became popular after some time of continual development from a national perspective in Trinidad. We need to do the same thing here. Do not be afraid to experiment with the rake and scrape sound, even if it means you have to write a sound that's playing like at this tempo, build around it. Don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to, to stretch out the chords. Don't be afraid to, you know, jazzy it up whatever you got to do, but always maintain the foundation, uh, the cadence that defines it as rake and scrape. Don't be ashamed to say, well, I have to add the soca element in it, or I have to add this R&B element. Take the core first, understand the core, dissect it, see what makes up these individual rhythms. Listen what Ronnie Butler did on on Burma Road, he took this, the, the rhythm of the saw and placed it on his hi-hat. He took the rhythm of the drums and placed between his guitar and the actual what the drummer was playing. And so if you see, he just took that bold step. You can now take it further, but you must take the chance to do it and be proud to be Bahamian. That's the most important part. <laughs>